In this video, we're going to learn how to make a primary chord. Now, primary chords form the spine of the kipu. Uh, so, in this case, I have a green primary chord, and you can see that it starts with a end knot, or in some cases, you'll find these big bundles that are on the primary chord, and then it ends in a dangling end over to the side. So, typically, scholars will read these kipus. Uh, from the end knot side over to the dangling end. And it's believed that the primary chord could have acted as the subject of the kipu. So you could look at the primary chord and say, this is a kipu about labor accounting at Anchukaya, based on the, the signs in the primary chord itself. So some of the ways that these primary chords could signify information are first of all the ply direction of the, the primary chord. Second of all, uh, you could often have rich color combinations that are built into these chords. In the case of this tutorial, uh, we're just going to learn how to make a simple green colored primary chord, but you'll be able to learn in the next few videos how you can make more complicated color uh, combinations and make more complicated primary chords. So let's get to it. Let's figure out how to make a primary chord. I've tied three one meter cords of the same color together at the top here, and I have a homemade spindle consisting of a hook and a dowel rod. In the next video, we'll talk about how to make more complicated color combinations on pendant cords, and you can apply those methods in creating your primary chord. But for now, let's just stick with the basics. I'm going to use this rock to hold down the cord while I build up tension in the yarn by rolling the spindle but you can also use your hand if this is easier for you. The direction in which you ply your cord was used by kipu keepers as a binary sign distinguishing two categories from one another. You can either build up tension by rolling your spindle in a counterclockwise direction like this, resulting in an S-ply cord, or in the clockwise direction, resulting in a Z-ply cord. I'll make this primary cord an S-ply cord. We want to build up as much tension as possible in the yarn in order for the cords to be plied together. We're starting to see it pop back on itself, so we're almost there. When it looks like you've got enough tension, fold the cord in half. Be careful not to let the tension go on either side of the cord. and tie off the end. We now have a primary cord.